blaspheme his Holy Ghost, Jesus said, observe whatsoever things he's commanded you. He commanded you and warned you that if you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, you have t thrown your eternal salvation away. You will not be forgiven. Don't play with fire. How do you blaspheme the Holy Ghost? You already know, speaking evil of those things which God has ordained. Speaking evil of the word. Trying to say that certain scriptures don't belong in the Bible. People are doing this every day and you see them getting turned over to reprobate minds because no matter how much you show them the truth of the scripture, how much you show them the truth of the fact that God ordained a Bible translation that has all the scripture in it, forget about the King James translators. Let's look at the word and the very scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And somebody put lampstands or candlesticks instead of lampstands, it does not change the meaning of the verse. It's talking about lights. More people today use candles than they do lampstands, but the bottom line is you're shining a light. Do you understand? It hasn't changed the scripture to the point where you're going to get all messed up. You understand? So don't worry about if certain things are there or certain things are in parentheses. As long as it don't change the scripture. If it changes the scripture, now we got a problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. And these other Bibles take stuff out and put stuff in that don't belong. Which God commanded you not to do. Okay? And that's what the problem is. People are worshiping the footnotes of other people instead of reading the scripture. Taking scriptures out and putting them in the footnotes. How evil is that? Like you made that scripture or something. No. When people translate the scripture correctly and they use the proper Bible, you think they get a proper interpretation. But I can tell you there are denominations that still blow it. Even with their King James Bible, they still blow it. They teach heresies like once saved, always saved. They teach heresies like if you ain't baptized in Jesus' name, you can't go to heaven. They need to stop. They're lying. Those that believe that get caught up and, and, and turned over if they don't get out of it. It's a very dangerous, dangerous place to be. When you're in a church teaching false doctrine, teaching you to tithe, teaching you to do all these things that put you back in the bondage when Christ has made you free from it, it is dangerous. Because many people that are in it can't get out. You understand? Don't you put yourself in it. Just like don't you go and sniff no coke or shoot up no heroin. Because once you get in, it's a good chance you might not get out. Don't play with fire, okay? Obey God. Observe whatsoever things he's commanded. Let's go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter number 2 and verse 1. My little children, check this. These things write unto you that ye sin not. Don't let nobody call you a sinner if God has cleansed you from your sin and made you a saint. He's telling you not to sin. And if any man sin, which is a, you know, a willful act of disobedience, that's what sin is. This also can be done ignorantly. But when you're serving God and you sin, God's going to tell you. He's going to let you know. And you better repent. And if you sin, and if any man sin, we have an advocate, okay? With the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, he's our mediator. He's the one that's interceding. See, because God could destroy you. Once you sin, knowing God could destroy you and still be just. But thanks to the mediator, he gives you chances. But there comes a time you keep blowing your chances. And one day, you're going to find yourself in a lake of fire. And you're going to remember all the chances God gave you to turn from your sin. <laughs> and he is the propitiation for our sins. He's the payment. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world, whole world. That means Jesus made it possible for the whole world's sins to be forgiven. It's not saying that everybody's going to heaven. 
That's what folks are trying to teach. What this once saved, always saved stuff. No, you have to live a life of obedience. You're saved when you come to Jesus, but you're lost if you go back into that which he saved you from. If a child gets rescued from a from a from a forest and goes running back into that forest and they can't find their way out, guess what? They're lost. They're lost. And they better hope somebody finds them before some bear or some creature finds them and takes them out of here. You understand? Don't go back into the forest because Satan wants to devour you. He's a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he's devouring people through their false doctrines, getting them right back into sin, thinking they're all right, only to hear at the end, I never knew you. If they keep playing. And hereby we do know that we know him. How do we know him? If we keep his commandments. It's talking about the commandments of grace here. Is what it's talking about. See, folk want to go back to Mount Sinai. It's talking about the commandments of Jesus. Remember, Jesus took, took the law to a higher level. A higher level. When he revealed that the thoughts of your heart and attitudes of your heart cause you to be a transgressor of the law. Okay? So you need Jesus' grace. Because you can't keep the law on your own without the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. But if you follow Jesus, you won't be contradictory to the law. You'll be living under a higher law, the law of the Spirit. Walking in faith and obedience. Verse 4. Check this. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Once saved, always saved. They are teaching a lie. But whoso keepeth his word and him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Wow, he that saith he abideth in him, you want to be a Christian, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. That means Jesus walked in obedience to the Father. Now Jesus kept every <coughs> jot and tittle of the law. He didn't break one. We've already broken it. So you can't walk in the perfection of Jesus. You've already blown it. But once you come to Jesus with the help of the Holy Ghost, you can be obedient to the Father just like Jesus was obedient to the Father. Okay? Only Jesus did it from beginning. Excuse me. Jesus did it from beginning to end. We didn't do it from beginning to end. But we can start obeying God. And we can repent of our sins. See, Jesus never had to repent. Because Jesus never sinned. If you sin, you have to repent. That's all it's saying. The gospel is very simple. It's very simple. Those that love God will obey him, will observe what Jesus taught, and will repent of their sins. And they will be justified, sanctified, glorified, cleansed, saved, all of those things. But you can't have one without the other. You can't say I'm justified and not be sanctified. You can't say I'm saved and not be justified and sanctified. They all go hand in hand. You can't take them apart and say, oh, I'm going to define them. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Either you're justified, sanctified, and saved, or you're not. Okay? You know, remember that old uh, TV show? Well, you might not remember it. My wife does. Okay? It was called Married with Children. I'm not promoting the show. There was a lyric at the beginning of it which talked about love and marriage and said, this, I say, my brother, you can't have one without the other. Let's talk about salvation. You can't have faith in Jesus Christ without obeying the gospel. No, you don't. Faith without works is dead being alone. But if you have the faith of God and now you're, you're called and you're obeying the gospel and you're doing the good works that you've been called unto, which is what God ordained you to do, then you can know for, for out of the shadow of a doubt that you are Jesus Christ and that your salvation is secure when you're obedient to him. There is no eternal security in disobedience. 
There is no eternal security in hypocrisy. There is no eternal security in a person turning their back on Jesus or claiming to be serving Jesus and willfully disobeying his commandments day after day, month after month, year after year. Don't you kid yourself. Don't you let nobody twist you up. They may have part of the truth, but if they ain't teaching the whole truth, then they're holding the truth in unrighteousness. They're teaching the truth and a lie together, which is corrupt. It is defiling. It is as defiling as urinating in a pure glass of water or putting a drop of bleach in it. Okay? Just understand, when they chlorinate the water supply, chlorine is the same chemical that bleach is made out of. You understand? And since they don't remove that from the water, just drinking chlorinated water can cause health problems. You understand? If you're going to clean the water, take the stuff out that's harmful to humans. And then you'll have a pure glass of water. Same thing with the word. Don't let anybody corrupt the word. And you'll have a pure word that will carry you from the time you surrender to Jesus Christ to the time he calls you home either by death or by the rapture, which is coming, which many that claim to be Christians don't even believe. Guess what? If you don't believe, you're not going. Just like if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not going to heaven. You don't believe in the rapture coming before the tribulation, you're lost. When the rapture comes, if you're not dead already, you'll be left right here to go to the great throat tribulation and you're going to be in big trouble. Because if you deny Jesus in one area, then you're probably going to fall for the mark of the beast and be lost. God wouldn't put that type of temptation on those whom he had redeemed. You understand? Yes. You understand? Now, because of what the Jews did in their idolatry, God had supernaturally blinded the nation of Israel. But there are still Jews that come out of that and get saved by believing the gospel. You understand? But a majority of the nation of Israel is not following Jesus as the Messiah. They don't think he's come. He's already come in flesh. He's already died and rose from the dead. Those that believe can be saved, just like Gentiles. There's no difference now. But there will come a great tribulation where God will turn his attention squarely on the nation of Israel. Those that are spewed out of his mouth living hypocritical lies will be left here. And they will be the ones running the counterfeit church system. So you won't have people getting saved based on the counterfeit church system God is going to have to send witnesses to Israel and then he's going to have angels having the everlasting gospel to preach there's going to be a lot of different things going on but there are going to be many even in the tribulation that get saved but they're going to be killed once they get saved they're going to have to flee for their lives to, or take the mark of the beast and if they don't take the mark of the beast they get killed but those that take the mark of the beast are lost forever. They've committed the unpardonable sin. So you got a choice. But guess what? If you're a part of the church of Jesus Christ, if you're a part of the Christian church, for real, which is every born-again believer on the planet of this earth, and you die, you're going to heaven. Or if the rapture comes, you're going to forever be with Jesus and never have to worry about what's going to happen in the tribulation is coming because God is pouring his wrath and God hasn't appointed us under wrath but under salvation be saved in Jesus name by surrendering to the truth of the gospel repenting of your sins and believing the word of God and obeying it and you'll be saved and you won't have to worry about what's coming down the pike amen amen, amen. father in the name of Jesus Thank you for giving me the ability to preach your word. Father, I pray that your word will not go upon deaf ears. I pray, Lord God, that my family and my wife and those that may hear this preaching of the word online will realize that, Lord, you have made such a precious salvation available for us. And you made it clear in your word that we are to serve you and follow you and endure unto the end and obey your word in order 
for us to see the manifestation of the reality of the eternal life that you have purchased for us through Jesus. Father, I just pray that those that heard or hear this sermon will understand the seriousness and come to you and allow you to expound on the truths that were taught here, that your spirit will guide them in all truth, and that they will not turn and follow after strangers teaching a false doctrine and a false gospel, but that they will follow your true gospel so that they may be truly born again and truly saved. In Jesus' name, I ask for your mercy and grace upon us. Be with us, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and help us to walk as obedient saints and, Christ and believers and Christians in Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go in his grace and praise the Lord. Hallelujah.